Hi, so welcome to lesson number five, module four of the Big Data and Hadoop Developer course. In this particular lesson, we'll be having a demo on the map reduced job operation. Now, before we jump right into the demo session, let's have a quick recap of the previous lesson. So in the previous lesson, we have learned the concept of mapper and reducer in depth. So in this particular lesson, we'll be explaining the map reduce job operation by picking up a practical code and an example. Now, we will use the same example that we have used in the previous lesson, which is the word count program. Now, the objective of this particular program is to count the occurrence of each word. Now, the different steps that is that are involved in this particular program is we have to define the mapper producer and driver class first, then load our input data into HDFS, then we'll execute the actual program which is running the jar file, and last but not least, we'll check the output and verify whether it is working fine. So here, as you can see, I have created a text file which contains our sample data. So it is the same data that I have used, the name of some people like Jack, Bill, Joe. So create this file and give it a name such as input file one and save it on your local file system for reference. Now, here is a sample MapReduce program executing the map method. Uh, here the arrow number one shows the map method. The map method reads the input data line by line and it is represented by the value parameter in the map method. So the input to the map method is a key value pair in fact. And here the key zero and the value is Jack, Bill, Joe. So what we have to understand here is the key here is zero because the framework already could have calculated the key value pair and the value will be the first line which is Jack, which is Jack Bill, Joe. Now we have to convert the textual value into a string type. Now the string variable line will store the Jack, Bill, Joe value. So we are declaring a new variable called line uh, of string data type and this is going to store the value jack bill joe so you can see the command or the code snippet for the same in arrow number two now once we are done that we are will create the object of string tokenizer class to handle our string value which is shown by arrow number three now the reference variable tokenizer hold the address of all the values here uh, now we also have a while statement that takes the parameter tokenizer dot has more tokens. Now this method returns, returns boolean values whether yes or no, right? Now if there are more tokens, what happens is that it will return true and it will the control will be gone inside the while loop. If there are no no more tokens, then the execution will stop. Now what will happen inside the while loop is that the first statement of the loop is value.set tokenizer.next token. This will set the tokens on the value variable. And here the token jack is assigned to the variable value. And finally, we'll write our intermediate output using the context.write method on the local file system. Then at last we'll have the output like jack comma one, bill comma one, joe comma one. Now this is the reducer class and we'll call it as reduce and this is shown by the arrow number one declaration of the uh, reducer class. Now this extends the standard reducer class. Now if you look at arrow number two you can see the reducer logic. Now what the reducer method does is that it takes input as a key value pair because the shuffle and sort phase will give it as a key value pair. The key is of text type and the value is intritable. Now here the key will be bill and the values will be one, 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 one. If you take the first key as an example, now the reduce method will be called for each key. If we are having, let's say five keys, the reducer method will be called five times. After that, we'll declare a variable and here we are calling the variable as sum. Uh, the variable has been initialized to a value of zero. 
all the values of a key will be added and they will be stored in the variable sum and here you can see that the key is bill and four ones which implies four values of bill will be added and incremented and stored in the variable sum now finally we'll use the context.write method to write the output the first argument of context.write is a key and as you can see the key here is bill and the second argument is sum whose value for bill will be the digit 4. Now this is our first tokenizer mapper.java file. Uh, if you can look at the first line of code represented by arrow number 1, this is the package name or the package statement. Now here the name is com.skillspeed.maven.wordcount. Uh, the, the next arrow, arrow number 2, you can see that we are importing five predefined classes. Now, the classes are one is IO exception, which handles input and output exceptions. Uh, second class is string tokenizer, which basically breaks the input file into words. The third one is intritable, which is used for integer. The fourth one is text, which is a wrapper for our string data type, standard string data type. And the fifth one is the mapper class. Now, next we'll have a look at the mapper class. Uh, this is shown by arrow uh, number three. Now, the tokenizer mapper class extends the mapper class. Now, we'll declare two variables uh, as you can see from um, uh, arrow number four. The first one is called one, which is of inwritable. The second one is called word, which is of text type. Now, if you look at the uh, arrow number five, that actually explains the map method implementation. Now, the map method reads the input data line by line and is represented by the value parameter in map method. Now, at this stage, the data is broken into tokens using our string tokenizer class. Now, the reference variable ITR show the address of each token. The while statement takes and it passes it to ITR.hasMoreTokens. This returns a Boolean value and if there are any more tokens, then it will be gone inside the while loop. Now, as you can see, the while loop has the first statement word.set itr.next token. This will set the tokens on the word variable. Uh, so, for example, if we have an input file containing John, then John will set the, then John will be set on the word variable. Uh, now, in the same package, we'll create the reducer class. So, the arrow number one is the package statement. You can see uh, the arrow has uh, four predefined imports such as IO exception, intritable, and text and reduce class. Now, let's have a look at the reducer class declaration. Now, if you look at the uh, arrow number three, you can see that we are declaring the reducer class. It's called as int sum reducer and it is extending the reduce class now if you look at the uh, arrow number four uh, you can see that uh, we are declaring a variable it's called result and it is of type int writable now this is used to show the final result now the arrow number five summarizes the logic that we are going to use now the reduce method takes input as a key value pair the key is of text type and value is of int writable type now, it will be called for each key. For example, if we have five keys, the reduce method will be called for five different times. Now, after that, what happens? We are declaring a variable called sum here and initializing that to zero. Now, all the values of a key will be added and they'll be stored in this particular variable called sum. Now, set the sum to the variable result and finally use the context or write to write the output. Now, at last, once this is running, we will have values like Bill 4, Don 4, Jack 6, and Joe 4. Now, this is the driver class, and as you can see, arrow number 1 is the package, and arrow number 2 are standard imports. Now, in arrow number 3, we are defining the class, public class word count, and if you look at arrow number four, we have uh, our public static main method. Now, if you look at arrow number five, then that is where the actual uh, declarations happen. So if you look at uh, uh, arrow number five, what you can see here is, 
uh, we are creating an object of configuration class to define the Hadoop development environment. Now then we will create an object of map reduce job and we'll define the state of the job object by configuration object and job name. Now here you can see that the job name is word count. Uh, now we'll run this job on cluster and we'll pick up the job into a jar file. Uh, Hadoop will use the set jar by class method to locate the relevant jar file by looking for jar file containing the classes. Uh, then we'll declare the driver class, mapper and reducer class. And as you can see, next we'll define the output key and value. Now, as you can see here, the output key is of text type and value is of inwritable type. Uh, we're also specifying the, specifying the input path by calling the add input path method on file input format. And our path is specified by calling this, calling the static set output path method on file output format. And the last line of the job code is job.wait for completion method. Now this method is submit the job and wait for it to finish. The return value is boolean, it indicating a success for zero or a failure for one. So this is also shown in our code example. Now, as you can see here, we are uploading the particular file to HDFS. The command is HDFS, DFS hyphen put and the file that we have created and root, which is the location. Now, this is the command to run the jar file. Now, the command is Hadoop jar word count dot jar, which is located on desktop input file, which is our input and the output is forward slash WC output. Now what we need to understand here is that the output directory should not exist on the Hadoop distributed file system. Now once the program successfully finishes, we can check the output by typing HDFS DFS hyphen cat forward slash the output directory, which is WC output forward slash part hyphen R hyphen Zero, 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 zero. As you can see, the word count program successfully ran, giving us the output of each word in the input file. So to wrap up in this particular lesson, we have demonstrated the code snippet and ran a word count example successfully. That's all for this lesson. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to raise a support ticket. Thank you.